Hello everyone, I'm Hannah Hansens reed the Education Specialist with the Oracle Applications and Technology Users Group. I'd like to welcome you all to today's e-learning session, Top 7 Tasks You Didn't Know You Could Automate in Oracle EBS. I have just a couple really quick reminders about today's webinar before we dive in. You'll all be on mute throughout the session. However, you are welcome to send questions at any time. Um, you can do that through the question box in your control panel. Um, we are recording this session and the recording as well as the slide deck will be available to OE2G members in the knowledge base. I'm gonna send a link now in the chat area where that will be posted later today. Um, if you are new to OE2G, our membership benefits include access to educational content. We have professional development for young professionals and a variety of events and networking opportunity. So please feel free to connect with me if you'd like to learn more about OE2G. And now without further ado, Adieu. I would like to turn it over to V. Duranuvang from Datavale, who will be presenting this session with us. Thank you, V, for joining us. You can take it away. All right, thanks, Hannah. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, this is, uh, thank you for joining. This is exciting. There are over 200 people registered, but I see uh, about 100. Uh, it's going 105 now um, joining. This is the biggest audience I've uh, never hosted. Normally, it's an audience of one, one heckler. and is the guy in the mirror. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I started as a developer at DBA in 1994 with a consulting uh, firm. Uh, I transitioned uh, to doing full-time DBA, uh, apps DBA in 1996 and been uh, supporting various aspects of DBS and the database ever since. My specialties, just to name a few, are uh, software development, which I haven't done too much of these days, but uh, uh, EBS, Oracle EBS, uh, Golden Gate Automation Performance Tuning. Okay. Before we start, uh, please uh, visit this URL, fill out a quick survey uh, for a chance to win these uh, awesome speakers. Actually, uh, they're pretty awesome. There's a, it's a Tiki uh, Torch Bluetooth speaker. Uh, my kids love these, actually. I have two of these. Um, again, please visit that site that's on, on the screen here. Uh, Libra Datavail, uh, we provide these services uh, not just with Oracle, but SQL servers, uh, Postgres, MySQL, and others. Check our website uh, to know more. So let's, let's begin. Uh, seven automation tasks. Uh, EBS, as you're aware, is a complex beast with many complex components. Managing these components is not an easy task. It takes time and often teams of people to feed it and support it. Anything to help ease these tasks will make life easier. Isn't that everyone's goal? Right? Making life somewhat easier for you, the DBA or the support team and the customer. How do we do this? We start with these seven automation goals uh, tasks, which has helped us a data veil to perform our tasks much more efficiently and provide additional value to our customers. Why automation? Well, that's kind of obvious why. Repetitive, mundane tasks should be automated. Automation improves quality of service, ensures consistent outcome, and avoid human errors. Automation helps with productivity. It allows you to do more and be more productive. Is an efficient use of resource time. It frees you up for other tasks, or more important, and less mundane tasks. Right? Automation is not a new concept. It's been around. Manufacturing has been using robots uh, to produce goods and, and, and products. We have robots as well, software robots, bots. Uh, what are bots? These um, programs are sets of programs that perform their intended functions without interventions. Uh, these bots can be scheduled in CronTab, which is a Unix scheduling tool, via DBA Jobs or DBMS Scheduler in Oracle through Application Scheduler as a uh, request or request sets, or manually initiated. Let's discuss where these bots can make a difference. First, uh, clones and, and refreshes. Uh, a clone is an exact copy of an environmental system. With respect to EBS, it's a copy of the database and the software, you know, the database tier um, and application tier. 
these copies or clones are generally copies of production environments to create non-production uh, environments like development, QA, stage, training, whatever. Refreshes are renewing existing clones or environments. There are many steps to these clones and refreshes, and these steps will have associated sub-steps. Uh, what, uh, what I'm saying is these activities are quite involved and they take time. Clones and refreshes can take from 12 hours to multiple days to do manually. We had a case where uh, refresh took 12 hours uh, of manual babysitting, care feeding, eyes on the screens, making sure each step of the process is successful and fingers on the keys to initiate subsequent steps is extremely time consuming and exciting for some people, right? Uh, automation can, can cut that 12 hours of cloning to three. Even if time saving is not that significant, automation will free you from performing such mundane tasks, right? Uh, since clones are so involved, uh, you have to test and test until you have a fully working process. Once all the kinks are worked out, you can automate and schedule your daily, your weekly, uh, your monthly, monthly tasks, whatever your frequency, your, your tired, your desired frequency for that clone. Right? Uh, this is just an outline of the general steps involved. Uh, it's mentioned before there are subsequent steps. There's so many steps involved in these. Uh, these general steps. We can automate any of any of these um, these steps, these general steps, or we can automate all of them. Right? For a single node environment, uh, multi-node environment, various configurations and platform. Right? Um, attaches them at the bottom is it's it's a matrix uh, to show some benefits. Right? Time save for a single environment mentioned earlier. Um, one of the longest automation uh, clone automations, 12 hours, now it's taking three hours. Uh, imagine the time saved for doing more than a single environment, you know, two, to, two to 10 environments. Uh, conversely, imagine the frustration and time wasted if you were to do these numbers of clones manually. Uh, as a managed service provider, we build our customers for every hour work. Time saved equals money saved for our customers. Number number two, daily uh, dashboard and, and health check, sorry. Uh, my tea here. As a DBA, one of your responsibilities is to know your system health and perform daily checklists uh, to validate that. Right, what, are, what, are, what are these checklists? Uh, it varies depend, de uh, depending on what system you're supporting. At a, min at a minimum, you should perform on a daily basis uh, these lists. Uh, we implement these checks for our customers in addition to um, other checks we're tasked with. Um, it can be a starting point uh, and can include additional items as you see fit. Uh, with a single environment, it's easy um, and does not require too much time to check um, these you know, database status and other, um, uh, other um, items on this checklist. But when you have multiple, it becomes very time consuming and could uh, be prone to error. Right? How do we make this easier and not miss crucial items? Um, this is where a dashboard can help. Uh, instead of manually logging into each uh, system, each server, uh, then into each database to run your queries and uh, performing daily checklists, uh, a, dashboard, a dashboard can be generated automatically with details ready for review with, within one report. And from there, it's only a matter of identifying which item in the checklist or in the report that needs attention and address them accordingly. Uh, the dashboard can be uh, simple or complex as you want. It could be a simple high-level overview of the system status or a complex comprehensive report with all uh, system components, processes, and, and, and other things you, you want to put in there. Uh, we'll see some samples um, of this in the, in the coming slides. Okay. This first example, it's a, it's a high-level uh, report, provides a clear status you know, for upper management 
who may only care to see this level of detail versus what DBA would want to see. You know, they want to see more than just this. In this example, you can see, um, you know, the uh, the 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 host uh, status and the database status. You can program it pro programmatically color code um, the stuff, right? The the status, you know, target being green, target up mean being green or red if it's down right? or any components is down. Right? Uh, this is um, a little bit more has a little more detail. Uh, report has a wealth of information providing details on the database and and the application in addition to what may be important in in the applications right from from here you can see on at the at least at the on the database side the host IP memory stats uh, processes um, you know, links to to the the application as well as uptime uh, on 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 the, on the EBS side you have concurrent managers you have pending requests invalid uh, objects number of sessions are connected uh, stats history get stats history f and d stats history right that's some of the information there uh, you, if you notice on 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 the database side the 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 max sessions and and process uh, this can be relevant in the, in the future slides. I'll talk uh, briefly about that. Um, here's some additional information. You know, you may want to know, uh, you know, what the rack information looks like, how your backups are, are performing, right, within, you know, within a week or even a daily basis, right? You can see that here, you can see a backup is failed, archive log is failed. You, you, you can see completed backups and even backup with warnings, you, know, you probably want to do a deep dive and investigate why they fail and uh, and why uh, what's the reason for the warnings. And at, at um, additionally, there's invalid objects. Right? That's kind of important. It could be it could have business impact if you have uh, invalid objects. Okay. Uh, like I mentioned, this is just a sample. You can have a whole wealth of information. Uh, you know, um, uh, top SQL. Uh, table space or, or object level sort of information here as well. Whatever you see that's that's important to do to you that you want to see on a on a daily basis or weekly or monthly basis. Right? Um, what are the benefits here? Well it uh, saves time, it helps identify issues, uh, provides hands-free reporting and prevent missed items uh, for your for your health check. Number three, concurrent managers workflow um, and monitoring and alerting. In the, EB, in the EBS world, concurrent managers and workflow are the heart of the application. Concurrent managers are the key services for queuing and, and scheduling processes and requests. Workflow is a, manage, a management system that automates and streamlines business processes. If any of these components um, is down, or not or not performing optimally, it could be it could have detrimental impact on 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 your business. Manually logging into EBS, navigating the menu system to get to the appropriate form, and verifying these details uh, does take time, takes a lot of time. Versus getting these details in the dashboard and getting alerts when any of the service is down, uh, it's, uh, it's it can save a lot of time. Um, what do we do uh, to uh, what 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 do we monitor uh, and alert with respect to concurrent managers workflow? There are conc um, there are concurrent managers defined uh, for the application. You, know, you can have you know you can have twenty, thirty, forty managers defined, and each manager would have set number of workers assigned. Right? If, uh, for example, if a manager is assigned 10 workers, uh, but nine, nine workers is running, that signifies that there's an issue. You know, a, a worker um, has been terminated or, or, or died somehow. You probably want to investigate why, the reason why. You know, if, there, if a request is running on that particular manager that died, likely that um, the request has erred as well. Right? So you probably want to investigate. Also, having less workers uh, may cause requests to, to queue up in the manager and will slow down the number of requests 
that a manager can run in parallel. Not only would you want to alert on on on, on this, you want um, you would want to constantly be checking emails on these alerts. Uh, actionable alerts should be creating tickets in your creating system in your ticketing system. You probably integrate that with your ticketing system. Um, this uh, this is a, a sample report that shows in in a meeting si medium sized environment with uh, thirty managers. There's customers with double the size, triple, even quadruple the uh, uh, the number of managers uh, that they have. Um, this has the uh, the the manager detail. Um, it has the, the where is running from, what node, uh, what the name of the manager is, the number of max process which is the workers um, that are assigned or and the actual number um, that is running. So if you have, uh, if your actual process do not match, your, 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 your actual do not match the max, that signifies there may be an issue. In this case, um, you know, the, the actual is more than the, 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 the max process. It really doesn't signify that there's an issue when it's less, then, then the assigned number of workers, then, then that be, becomes an issue. As mentioned, you know, you may have dead, uh, dead processes, dead, dead workers. Right? Um, with respect to workflow services, um, and any components that would impact the business function and flow. In this example, you can see um, the workflow net mailer is, is down. Uh, when it's down, it's it's important. This is an important component, if not the most important. Imagine a, a PO workflow when a ma when a mailer is down, no one is getting no notified that the potentially there's a PO that needs approval and cannot move along in the in the, in the process in the flow. Um, um, like with previous slides, what are the benefits? There are time saving and it, it could um, help detect issues. Um, number four, detecting concurrent requests, detecting pending, long running, and requests that that errors. Okay, why is this important? We can potentially catch problems before it becomes a bigger problem. Pending requests are requests waiting for a uh, manager to let them into the queue to be processed. When you have more than the usual amount of waiting, it it could signify a problem. With respect to long running. People have varying parameters with defining long running requests. Right? Some, you know, some some may say anything over sixty minutes, over two hours. Um, you know, some requests are supposed to run longer than sixty minutes or, or two hours. We define long running requests as anything running over their average runtime. So, in in regards to to requests with errors. Uh, very likely there are scheduled requests that users and business owners may not actively monitor and see that their scheduled jobs uh, make uh, have completed with errors. Um, these uh, may uh, be business critical requests and owner the owner should be made aware so that they can may take uh, corrective actions. Then the next slides will show examples of pending, uh, long running and request that error. Uh, this is pending requests. This this example is it, it, there's not many, right? Um, uh, there's some there's some information has been obfuscated uh, for obvious reason. The example shows just a handful of requests. With uh, when this list builds up uh, to double, you know, to 10, 20, 30, 40, to hundreds, it's likely there's there's there's, there's an issue and would require investigation. Uh, this example is detecting long-running requests. It captures requests uh, running over their 150 percent of their average runtime. Um, you may want to have additional logic to detect long requests. Maybe running over 150 percent of their average runtime, with you know running over 30 minutes for a certain user or responsibility or certain running certain forms or program. 
right? You have the tribal knowledge to understand your programs and requests and make that determination accordingly. Detecting um, requests that are complete with errors. Um, not that the previous, previous slides were not as important. It, uh, this one is extremely important. As a DBA, if we catch and are aware of issues, errors before the users, then we're doing our job. It would be uneasy and embarrassing otherwise. I'm sure uh, we've all been there where the user you know, would, uh, would uh, tell you that you know, there's a problem with the system. Right? Um, what what are what are the benefits? Uh, uh, similar, it um, it saves time, uh, provide faster uh, resolution, and keep customers happy. Okay. Lingering sessions. Um, EBS does not always do a good job in cleaning itself up. When a user exits a forum for you know number of reasons, various reason background processes, sessions associated with that form may not always terminate, leaving it orphan or them orphan. In some cases, sessions may spawn shadow sessions, 5, 10, 20, multiple sessions. Uh, this is especially true uh, when running parallel threads. Right. It's important to detect, uh, report, alert, and eventually kill these sessions. Consider it house cleaning. These sessions, although inactive, still consume resources. You know, they consume memory, connection pool, session, and 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 process. Right? They may prevent other sessions from performing their tasks by holding their locks. There are cases where lingering sessions would prevent new connections from connecting uh, to the DB uh, to the database or to the apps by maxing out the sessions, preventing existing uh, session from processing by maxing out their process as well. Uh, there were instances where lingering sessions would bring the system to its knees and the database would lock up because log writers or archivers cannot cannot process, cannot have new connections to process. Um, what are the benefits? Uh, you see a theme here. You know, with automation, it, it saves time, uh, detects issues minimize Im impact window. Um, uh, on to the next one, the number six, performance tuning. This is a complex subject and we'll touch briefly on some things we can do to help with system performance. Um, there may be a case where um, an, accept, accept, uh, an acceptable, acceptable execution you know, or optimal execution plan or hash for a certain SQL has, uh, has been identified, a baseline created, uh, but the baseline is not fixed. Detecting and alerting hash change can, um, can report on newly created plan. Right? The new plan may or may not be more efficient than the old or, or a list of, of hashes that, that you have. With this information, you can do a deep dive and determine the most optimal hash or plan and fix that in memory. We've seen uh, with many customers that a hash chain can detriment, detrimentally impact performance to a point that the system becomes inoperable. Right? In, um, in another case uh, where a new code is introduced, a new SQL is introduced, you, you want to give it time for the SQL to, to, to bake and then allow the optimizer time to come up with new hashes, very hashes, you know, execution plan to get to the to, to get to the data. Reporting on on these plans or hashes can help identify the most um, the most optimal plan for that particular SQL. Okay. Um, the same report can be used not just with the with the new SQL, but with old SQL that may have been overlooked, uh, they may not be the top 10, they may be the top 20 or something like that. Uh, you may, uh, that report can be useful to, um, to help tune that as well. Okay. Um, 
to check for to, to for SQL um, with baseline, with, with fix that's enabled or what have you, uh, to do a manual check via OEM requires so much time, right? It requires you to log into the system, uh, navigate the, the menu tree. Uh, you go, you would uh, log in the system, you pull down, you would select target, you would choose a database or cluster, you choose that particular environment, you pull down the performance hub uh, to see the list of SQL, right? You scroll down, you know, tens, hundreds of SQL to see where your SQL is, and then you click on that SQL and to find uh, to find this particular uh, screen, right? And you have to go to to the the plan control tab to actually get to the screen. Uh, you see that that's a lot of steps to get to it. It's time consuming to get to just one SQL, and it doesn't even tell you what hash the SQL is running. It'll give you a plan, but it doesn't give you what hash is running. Um, versus you automating this uh, automating this process, right? You can you can see all that in one report, not with just one SQL. You can see all the SQL with a baseline, right? It's associated hash. It has it been accepted? Is it is it enabled? Is it fixed? The number of ex execution. You can add other things to this report too, like you know the average runtime for the particular uh, the particular SQL, right? The elapsed time, all that stuff. Right? It's uh, extremely useful and uh, saves a lot of time. Um, this report shows the the SQL, you know, the SQL that has had that's uh, it's given time to bake, just so the optimizer can can come up with various uh, hash. Here you can see there's, there's four hashes. It's ordered by the most optimal hash based on uh, average um, runtime, the, the, the elapsed time. So with this information, you can choose that first uh, hash, create a baseline, uh, lock it in, you know, fix it in memory so it doesn't change, so it doesn't, you know, so your, your performance, your, your query, it's predictable, right? Um, again, here, what are the benefits? You know, it saves time, can help restore system performance, prevents performance impact. Uh, that's that's kind of important, right? very key. Um, request sets and month and close activities. <clears throat> month and close process is extremely complex and requires involvement from various departments and owners of that respective modules. Tracking the statuses of all these processes, requests or request sets can take uh, hours and, court, and <laughs> in addition to coordinating with, with uh, various business owners, the month and uh, close processes comprise of many, many request sets and these request sets can be extensive and have uh, children requests grandchildren request and great grandchildren great grandchildren request traversing these hierarchy for for issues can be confusing and time consuming guess what we can automate that process right? um, here's just an example of, of of one request set in the entire scheme of the, of the month end process you can have you know tens or or you know multiple request sets for that month and um, process. But um, this one um, displays um, the the parent and the child. Number one signifies the parent. Number two, you know, in in, in the in the prefix signifies a uh, um, a child. Uh, this is um, showing just 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 um, parent and child. In the next slide, you'll see you'll see more to to uh, to this request set, right? For example, this one, this request set has all, all these uh, children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren. I uh, hear you. Um, you see all the errors, and you would probably want to notify the business owner, right, um, of, of 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 these um, of these errors. Um, we actually created this report, particular report for for a customer that automatically goes to the that emails goes to the um, the alert goes to the business owner. And um, this example, you can see the issues uh, at various points of the hierarchy tree, uh, where you would uh, take appropriate actions to, um, um, defined in the playbook. Uh, 
uh, the business owner would would you know would adjust this issue. Uh, this has saved the customer time, a lot of time, and for extremely appreciative appreciative to have this support. Right? So what's what are the uh, the benefits? Uh, again, you know, it saves time. It's an added uh, great value to the customers and save user uh, you know, customers from doing manual investigation. Uh, I mentioned in the pre previous slides there were seven automation tasks. You can do you can do so much more. So I mean so so much more as you can do um, automation. This made these lists made uh, some honorable mentions. You 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 may have your own. Right? Um, the first example it's you know, um, automation uh, through uh, configuration con configurating uh, Unix environment uh, to lay out foundation for DB or application installed for clone for refresh updates or what have you. You know you would install required RPMs and packages, standardize uh, Oracle or Apple manager environment. You know, some customer has used has gone further and used Ansible and 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 other and other tools to 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 help with automation. Uh, additionally, uh, you know you can automation can help with uh, code migration. Uh, code migration could be a simple form migration update for a simple form update and package update to an entire release where it could take uh, days to migrate. You know, days uh, to several hours. You know, we we actually help the customer uh, automate code migration that um, that cuts the time from multiple days to multiple hours. Right? Uh, in addition to code migration, when you when you deploy code, migrate codes to various environments, uh, you want to ensure code consistency. How do you do that? Well, you can automate uh, code comparison. You know, at the at your uh, Unix level at the um, OS level or down to the the SQL level, you know, comparing packages, uh, source code, um, you know, um, procedures, all that stuff down to that level. You can you can do so much more, you know, security audit, vulnerability patch, all that stuff, right? So, um, to to recap, we discussed some ideas that you may or may not know you could automate, but now. Now you know uh, these automation ideas will uh, improve quality of service, avoid human errors. It's an efficient, uh, it will efficiently manage, help you, help you efficiently manage the system. You know the the day to day operation. It can catch potential problems ahead of time, uh, provide better customer support, and at the end will make life somewhat easier. Uh, when done together, you can reduce the Total DBA time spent supporting the system by 15% or more. Uh, what are what are the next step? What should, what should you do? Well, review these automation ideas. Uh, you may already have your own ideas brewing during this presentation. Uh, assess those ideas, the ideas, and, and areas where you can automate. Prioritize based on anticipated payback. You know. Uh, what you get, uh, what gets you the most bang for, for your buck? Invest in efficiency. Make automate, uh, automating a task a standard part of your of your routine. Uh, consider a third party review. Right? Uh, There's value in having a fresh set of eyes and ideas, and often at little cost, uh, they can help improve security performance and help DBA learn learn new skills, tips, tricks, and best practices. Uh, yes, um, sorry, that's, that was a plug. We at Databell can humbly offer that assistance. Before we conclude, I'd like to leave you with, uh, with a quote from a great philosopher. He says, um, set it and forget about it. This concludes uh, the presentation part of our webinar. Um, as a reminder, uh, we have uh, we have a um, you know this uh, a chance for you to win this uh, Bluetooth speakers. Uh, please fill out the evaluation form. Um, uh, good luck with winning. 
Uh, your kids will love these. My, after my kids love these, especially when it's pickles like this. Um, now on to the, the next section of the, the webinar, which is uh, questions and, and, and discussion. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Fee, for this great presentation. This is very helpful. And we do have a few questions. And just a reminder to everyone else, if you do have questions for V, you're welcome to send those through that question box in your control panel. I'll go ahead and read the questions, and then I'll also put them in the chat box in case people want to read along. Um, the first question is, um, do you have any suggestions for tools or methodologies for automating patching? So add patch, opatch, etc. Uh Patching, um, OEM has automated patch as well. Uh, patching, you can you can automate uh, patch, um, AD patch, a, a, a ADOP patch uh, for the new version. We 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 done, uh, you know, we done partial uh, automation. We done um, uh, full automation with with patch. Uh, as far as its tools, you know, I would say. Um, OEM can do it, but it's not fully automated. Um, script has helped a lot. You know, we 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 do a lot with uh, Bash. You know, corn shell scripting uh, with uh, with patch automation. Mainly, it's you know, it's just a Unix shell. Hope that answers the question. Great, thank you. And yeah, please feel free to follow up if um, you do have additional questions after they're answered. The next one is, what okay. tools are used for these automations? Uh, tools automation, a lot of, the, uh, as before, it's uh, it's a custom uh, custom script, uh, shell, uh, Unix shell scripting. Uh, there's some parts that we, we use Perl as well. It's just custom uh, custom scripting. Great, thank you. And the next one is, what about web logic components monitoring? Web logic, yes, you can monitor. Uh, there's EBS plugin for for that uh, for web logic monitoring. That's also uh, <laughs> scripting, right? Uh, checking uh, processes in 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 the, on the server that 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 they're running. Right? You can you can you can automate that. You can alert on 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 various components of uh, of web logic. You can even monitor up to you know um, uh, in the memory that they're using, right? If it's uh, if it's uh, if we're seeing cases where actually um, uh, memory leaks that associate with uh, with uh, this uh, web logic uh, processes where it consumes so much memory, you know, maybe you can get an alert on uh, if it's consuming over the max um, memory, then you can alert on that and maybe kill that as well, not just to monitor it, but you know, maybe self-corrective action where you where you detect, uh, where you report, you detect, and then you 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 resolve um, uh, the whole the whole process you can automate. And you can even restart, you know, kill and then restart that, you know, your 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 sessions. Great, thank you. And I'm gonna just respond. There's a couple questions um, of wanting to have that link for the survey again, because I know that prize is um, coveted. So I've just sent that link again and let me know if you're not seeing that. Um, and then just a reminder to everyone that the recording and the slides will be available to OHUG members. That will be posted in the database and I'll go ahead and send a link again to that in a moment. Um, the next question is, someone is considering Ansible at the moment. Um, they were curious if anyone else is doing that and if there are other approaches. Uh, yeah, we have uh, customers that are using Ansible. I think uh, my head should probably be a little bit more familiar with that that uh, Ansible product. Yes, Ansible, yeah. So with Ansible and RunDAC and there are ways, various ways we can automate it. Like one example that we've seen with customers is that they have 100 plus uh, web logic environments and database forms, and they wanna patch, maintain quarterly with all the security. And just imagine doing that many number of uh, Oracle homes or web logic homes patching. So they've created automation with Ansible behind 
for the tasks. Um, and then from the front end, control all that activity uh, from just the web page. So that, that was a combination of RunDAC and Ansible scripts. So there are various ways to achieve it. Um, but yeah, Ansible is definitely, it, it takes you one step further than the shell scripting. It makes it easy and it's, it may, it's also quite possible that once you know what your exact requirement is, it's easy to find those scripts online, even if you are not familiar. Um, you know, that helps, hopefully that helps. Great, thank you. These are very helpful answers. And again, um, feel free to follow up if you do um, have your question asked and then have additional questions after. Um, the next question is, what is the best way to handle the invalidate package state error when you try to recompile the package referred to in WF? I'll send that. <laughs> well, um... It doesn't have to be specific to that NWF. Right? If uh, Oracle has a function that recompiles invalid objects, right? The, the recompile, the UDO recompile, that you can recompile in parallel. Um, if that doesn't fix it, you have to actually have to go to the, look at the code to see why um, why the why it won't recompile. Right? You have to do a deep dive and actually do your code review and and determine why the 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 object would not recompile you know, so there's no way around that you just you have to look at the code if it does not recompile you know if there's dependency you know um you, know, you have list codes if that dependency uh the oracle function would take care of those dependency you know recompiling package in the right order just to it would, would validate but if it does not validate due to errors, then you have to do a manual investigation as to see why uh, it would not recompile. Great, the next question is, is there an option to monitor Java memory, keep and kill the related process alone, leaving other processes unimpacted? Yeah. Yes, yes, there are. I think it's related to that web logic that we uh, that we touched briefly about. It's the same sort of process where you can, uh, um, you know, you can monitor the process. You can see how much memory that process is taking, and if it's reaching its max or above its max, then usually there's a memory leak, and you should kill it. And you can kill it and restart that Java process the same way. Pretty, you know, not too complicated. Do that in the shell script. Um, have you considered RPA for any of these automations? What does that stand for, RPA? Great question. I will let the person follow up and let you know when yeah. they have sent their. I'll move on to the next question, but yeah, please let us know. Um, yeah. The next one is, what is uh, or was it um, Nagio's tool for monitoring concurrent? Managers, I apologize if I'm not reading these correctly. I'll send them. Yeah, no, it's, it's an agile. Yeah. No, the, the one we shared we on the screen, that's not Nagios. It is the custom script uh, mm -hmm. and the alerting and monitoring. Yeah, Nagios, you can customize. You can, yeah, you, you, you can customize. You can use that tool. You can add on to that. Uh, usually Nagios use, um, it's for system system monitoring and alerting, right? Or system that you can customize the code to do check on database to check on application as well. Thank but you. Yeah. And we oh go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say that Mahesh um I I I I think he answers the questions. Uh, yeah, the state, question uh, was it what how we did it, right? What we did okay, is yeah. not using the net no. no it's not but you but can use it how we can do it it's there are a lot of options but this one is custom script yeah is what it's means. custom script collections of scripts right that's that's all it is it's more flexible when you customize it yourself versus using other tools great and we got a number of people just thank you to everyone who wrote in um, with what rpa stands for so that is robotic process automation 
So the question um, was, have you considered robotic process automation for these automations? No, I am not familiar with that. I probably want to look into that. Thank so the, the, what we've seen is those we have seen from the business end of processing, not so much related to backend admin related tasks. What we focused here is more on the ops side of things that are mostly done by apps DBAs and where time can be saved. But we have seen customers um, when it comes to processing certain documents and stuff like that, we've seen that be being used on the front end piece of business. Um, the next one, we have, we have a few more questions and again, feel free to keep sending those in since we still have time. Um, the next one is how do the automation tools in place get updated when the actual tech stack gets changed? Say 19C database introduced CDB concept. Uh, this uh, this tool, the the automation that we that we've done, is not depending on version or uh, versions of. Uh, well, I guess it may it is kind of depending on on some versions of the applications, right? Because if the foundation if the foundation code is changed, then you know we'll have to change our code to reflect that. You know, if any column change or table, uh, uh, if a view would change that uh, has additional columns or, m or missing uh, columns, then we'll have to adjust the code for that, right? Uh, you know, it um, with respect to the database, it doesn't matter if it's multi-tenant, if it's CDB or, or not, if it's racked or non-racked, it'll pull um, information from the database regardless of of those platforms, right? Of those versionings. Um, but with respect to application, you know, that's might a little bit more, uh, how would you say it's sensitive to, to versioning. Hope that answers the question. If not, we can do a follow-up. Perfect, thank you. Um, the next one is I recently spent several hours working with a managed service team to find out that we were missing some codes in our production environment. Did you say that there was a code comparison tool? Oh, not a tool. It's just it's just all these are custom scripts. You can uh, you know you can you compare codes uh, you know through, through through scripts, right? Uh, SQL scripts that would uh, would look through um, you know uh, the objects you know even down to the column differences, right? The table, the columns, the view, the packages, uh, um, any code in, in the database you can compare uh, between environments. And uh, in addition to that, you can you can uh, traverse the, um, the, um, the the code tree, software tree, to see if there's any differences in, in your file system as well. So all those, uh, you have to customize. I mean, we're, we're, we customize that for for a handful of uh, of, uh, of our customers. Right. All right. We have a couple more. Um, let, this, sorry, let, let me yeah. go. Let me go back. I think SQL developer can compare SQL code between two environments. You can use SQL developer for that. Go ahead, sorry, on to the, on to the next question. <laughs> no need to apologize, it's very helpful. Um, yeah. This one, let me, um, is the tool demo, um, tar let me read this, is the tool demo targeted for primary systems or can it be extended to active data guard reporting server? Uh, if it's active data guard, yeah, uh, you, you can report on those. If we, if we do report on lag time, we report, uh, you know, if uh, you know one is lag time and even code comparison between between the primary and and the um, and the and the secondary. And I mean, this is custom. I mean, this you know you can do anything, pretty much anything you want with it. You know, this is not our tool. It's, you know, you can use Unix shell script and you can use C, you can use Perl, you can use anything you want. At the, you know, as your disposal uh, for automation. 
Great. It looks like we're through all the questions. So I'll give everyone just another minute if there's anything else um, that they wanted to follow up on. And I'll quickly remind everyone that OATUG members will have access to this recording and the slide deck. Um, and please feel free the, um, to connect with V and Mahesh again for um, Mahesh, thank you for being on to also help answer these questions. Um, yeah. Or anyone at the Datavail team, if you would like to follow up. Yeah, if you want to give them my, you know, uh, my email, Mahesh's email, we can, you know, just follow up questions. We're glad, you know, we, we, we're glad to, to take a look at them and, and answer them. Um, yes, I will leave the um, info at Datavail in the chat now, um, the one that's up on the screen, in case anyone wants to copy that. Um, so please feel free to follow up. And I'm not seeing any additional questions. Um, so I just want to say a huge, huge thank you again to V for presenting this e-learning with OETUG and thanks to Mahesh um, for helping to field all of the questions um, and also providing expertise. And thank you all for joining us today. This will conclude our webinar. Well, again, thank you everyone for, for joining. Appreciate that. Thank you everyone for your time. Yeah. Thank have you. A have a great rest of your week. Yeah, have a great day and stay safe from COVID. <laughs> All right.